CentOS is a sensible Linux distro well known for its functionality, home server capabilities and compatibility with RHEL. Raspberry Pi needs no introduction either with its status as the supreme single board computer. Hi this is Phil from Make Tech Easier. Here we're going to cover how to install CentOS on your Raspberry Pi 4. As one of the most popular single board computers on the market, the Raspberry Pi is a mainstay in most Linux users' homes, whether it's for home server applications, computers for kids, learning Linux or some other skill, you can surely find a use for the Pi. Given its popularity as a home server, we're going to show you how to install CentOS on your Raspberry Pi to create a rock solid home server. Getting the CentOS image. The specific Raspberry Pi images from the CentOS project are hidden a little bit in the downloads page. For the best experience, I can recommend using CentOS 7. From the CentOS homepage, click on CentOS Linux. Then click on 7 2003. That version number may change over time, but that's the one we're using now. Choose whichever mirror is closest to you in the mirror page and you'll be presented with a list of options to choose from. There are a couple that are important for this project. Four at the time of writing that say Raspberry Pi in the name. For my case, I'll be grabbing the one that says Raspberry Pi Minimal 4 as I'm installing this on a Raspberry Pi 4B. Make sure you'll choose whichever is best suited for your particular use case. Flashing your SD card. For most users, Balena Etcher is probably the best choice for flashing your Raspberry Pi SD cards. One of the key parts is that it will flash straight from the XZIP archives that you downloaded for most Raspberry Pi images. The flashing process is very easy. Launch the application, select the source file, the CentOS archive in this case, the SD card port, and then click Start Flashing. It'll only be a little while before everything is finished and you can boot from your SD card onto your Pi. Booting CentOS on your Raspberry Pi. With these images, it should be just as simple as turning it on and waiting until you get to the command prompt. If you're able to install either the KDE or the GNOME version, you'll be bumped straight to the login screen. The default login credentials are username root, password CentOS. An important note, change the root password and create a non-root user for yourself immediately. If you don't do this, there's a decent chance that someone, aka a hacker, will know this and get into your system with root access. That's not good. So the commands to create a new user are as follows. Changing your root password, passwd, creating a new user, user add, insert username, minus g, wheel, minus p, password. Insert the password of your choice. That command will create a user in the wheel or sudo group, allowing you to fully switch users and avoid logging in as root. Once you do that, make sure to use the su command to switch users to your newly created user like so. su and username, substituting the username of the user you just created. From there, make sure your packages are up to date with the update command sudo yum update y. Installing a graphical desktop environment. This is one of the easiest parts. You can see the available software groups with the following command. Yum group list. Choose which one you'd like to install. I'll be installing GNOME, but KDE Plasma is available too. Pseudo yum group install GNOME desktop. This seems to depend on which Raspberry Pi you're using. On the Pi 4B, I could not get SystemMD to jump directly into the GUI, even though it said it was running. Your mileage may vary. Part of the fun running a Raspberry Pi is all the tinkering you have to do. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. That's all for now. See you next time.